like to take this opportunity and welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for our continued coverage of Charbonne Hydrogen. Uh, I'm going to be using a couple of pieces of content uh, in explaining uh, Charbonne Hydrogen um, in a way that uh, has helped me understand the company. Um, there is a lot here to unpack. Uh, first and foremost, Charbonne um, put in their investor presentation a projection of financials that included uh, five phases of the company. When I initially looked at this, it generated more questions than answers. There was an interview that was completed here um, a couple of weeks ago on YouTube by Mariusz Skonochnia. It was um, an executive COO of the company, Mr. Daniel Charette. After watching that interview, and coupling the information that I have about the projected financials, uh, I'm going to provide that uh, to you guys uh, up on the screen here so you kind of understand a little bit about the basis for the number of questions that I had uh, after the interview, uh, as well as after this phased-in approach um, to what Charbonne is doing. And it, it spurred up some obvious questions. Uh, to the point of um, some frustration for me, okay? Um, I've covered hundreds of companies. Uh, I'm able to quickly look at a company and evaluate whether or not it's a good investment or bad, uh, what they do with regard to their business plan, their business model, um, how much capital expenditure and operating expenditure they may potentially uh, need uh, to make their business plan a go, whether or not a business will need financing, um, whether or not there is a need for the product. And I think with Charbonne being as unique of a project as it is, uh, first mover advantage here in North America, I think you will benefit from my opinion in understanding the lens that I took when I evaluated this information on the reaction to the phased in process that I released a couple of weeks ago. Um, and this is meant to amplify a little bit because I didn't have or was not privy to the information that was um, so elegantly displayed by Mariusz's interview with um, Mr. Charette of Charbonne, was able to provide a, an amazing amount of color around the context of questions that were generated both by me, uh, and I thought Mariusz did a great job of, of genning up some questions. So I will provide a link to that. Because outside of being redundant, I think that everybody can value uh, different opinions and 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 different uh, interpretations based on the deep due diligence um, that I've done on Charbonne uh, after a lot of different questions took me down a lot of different rabbit holes, left me with a sequence of a lot of questions that still to this day are are unanswered with regard to the question. And I think that is due to the nature of where this company is in its evolution of its business plan uh, at the early stages and onset of that and, and what that could potentially mean when cross-checked against their proposal for what they're looking to stand up at their 16 facilities. And I think in all fairness of evaluating a company with such a light market cap, $4 million, uh, U.S. on the market cap for Charbonne, I, I think it's incumbent upon us to realize that if we weren't talking about a company that was in such early stages of bringing green hydrogen to the market, then we also would not be talking about a company that's trading at around five cents U.S. either, okay? Before we get into this, I want to invite everyone to uh, read the disclaimer um, be below uh, it will give some context and color around my association with this content and Charbonne Hydrogen directly. Uh, please understand that you will need to do your own due diligence uh, with regard to making your own investment choices. Um, all of that uh, and more is provided in the disclaimer below, and I invite you to review those so you can understand how to view this content, uh, how it could potentially help you. Uh, and how you have a responsibility in this um, bringing forth of information on a company that maybe you were unaware of before we um, we started talking about it, okay? Before we get into this, I do want to play an opening clip from the interview, which I thought was the most telling 
segment of the interview. It's about 40 minutes long. I've watched it now multiple times. I invite you to do the same. But I want to get your reaction, and I want to provide some reaction on Mariusz's statement here with regard to scale and what Charbonne is looking to do at their Charbonne uh, hydrogen, at their Sorrel Tracy facility, in looking to get this project off the ground. Let's take a listen. But I would think that the first financing is going to be hugely important because right now, Charbonne is, we are a company that promises to produce green hydrogen. But I think that after you show to the world that you can produce on whatever scale, whether it's you know two megawatts or 2.5 megawatts, then you can show them the economics behind it. And then you can be like, see, if you give us more money, we can replicate this 10 times. So I think Mary, you really hit it on the head here with this question and, and, and really understanding that uh, Charbonne is forecasting to take over the world with green hydrogen. I mean, and they're, they're talking about phase fives. They're talking about some very vague projections here. Uh, you know, EBITDA of less than 30 million on a phase five project. But how much goes into that project? How much need in those areas are necessary? Can we draw permits for those areas? Okay. So this, I think, summarized it beautifully in that what do we have right now with Charbonne hydrogen? We don't know until they are able to give us some level of tangible template and an ability to execute on a small scale. And that's the confusing part about Charbonne is that these projections talk about, you know, 25 megawatts of capacity at a large phase five facility. And they're presumably being all this need and demand for this green hydrogen and maybe even a potential there to win dirty hydrogen business in these respective areas, that permits will be issued, that the local municipalities will accept these projects. We were able to glean uh, a cost of the actual facility, which is some of my questions that I'm going to review with you guys today and hopefully gen up some of your own questions and provide some level of color ar around where this company is, where it's going, and 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 even get to the most important question that I'll save for last. But let's get into this. In my review of Charbonne Hydrogen, I was to the point where I really didn't understand. And when I get to that point, I start to ask myself rhetorical questions. What if this? What if that? What if they don't execute? Why, why do we need this company? Okay. And I'm going to go through some of this list here, and hopefully this can help you understand my evaluation of a company in seeking out answers to questions that I have generated based on the, the public knowledge that I have through the investor presentation, interviews that were completed by myself, as well as uh, Mariusz and others uh, in the public-facing forum. This is the first one I had. What capital expenditures are necessary to bring a facility online? Okay. Charbonne is projecting a phase five of 25 megawatts with 3,650 kilograms of, of hydrogen offered to, to, to the masses. Okay. 56 million a top line, 28 million of EBITDA. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mariusz asked him about this. He said, you know, he was making the comparison between mining companies that say, look, we want to do all of this. It's going to cost X number of dollars. Our capital expenditures are going to be X, X amount, and it ends up being 10X that amount and far exceeds any gold they could extrapolate from the ground. And I thought that comparison was fair. And, and I thought Daniel did a good job of codifying, and I do believe this is a positive attribute of Charbonne, in that I think that they've got a really good handle on what, especially on the two and a half uh, megawatt facility in phase one, uh, the cost that's going to go into this. And those costs are surrounded around the electrolyzer that we've talked about on the channel, the compressors, the permanent storage, okay, and the bundle packs. Now, you talked about single cylinder transport and bundle packs, which opens up a whole new envelope of pricing when we're talking about per kilogram of hyd green hydrogen to be transported to the end customer, okay? It was 
very important to address construction costs, which Daniel talked about as well as being somewhat modular and, and, and somewhat um, repeatable which if they do get this Sorrel Tracy, and I expect an announcement anytime here, guys, on progress at the Sorrel Tracy facility. We haven't heard much since the uh, newest electrolyzer uh, news release was released through social media. I reported out on that insofar as I thought it was a win for the company in showing progress, okay? Not that they were going to produce million kilograms of, of, of green hydrogen and they were going to miraculously sell that to the world overnight. That was not the intent of that. The intent was merely to suggest that they were making progress toward an end. And until we start to see marked progress on Charbonne, we're going to continue to evaluate their progress on bringing phase one on the line. And they're actually producing green hydrogen to sell to their customers. OK, so that was the number one. And I thought that was pretty bullish. And I thought that that was one of those explanations through the interview that I heard that Daniel had very, very good command over. And I was appreciative of his color on that topic. The next question was, what is the cost of this hydrogen? What the freaking hell is the cost? I looked through the chart. I looked through phase five and I was like, OK, how much does it cost to produce? How much does it cost to transport, okay, a a as it reflects to Charbonne's business plan, which is to reduce the transport cost. We'll get into that, all right? But what the hell does a kilogram of hyd uh, green hydrogen cost? And through the deliberation of the interview, I think you'll take and be able to extrapolate the same as me, that we rested on about $17 per kilogram of hydrogen end cost to the user, okay? 17 Now, there is some explanation that needs to go into this because we don't understand how much need there will be for cylindrical storage and shipment to end customers. There is no uh, reason to believe that we understand how many bundle packs will be purchased, which also drives a different premium. Mariush broke down the specifics of those individual costs. And then finally, in my assessment, where the money is, is in bulk. Now, what I got out of the interview is that the bulk price per kilogram is dependent upon the ability to liquefy the hydrogen for bulk transport. Okay. Now, Charbonne wins on both fronts. If they're able to provide, as they disclose, phase five facilities at 25 megawatts and you know, 3,650 kilograms of, of, of green hydrogen to the end user, that is going to require some level of liquefaction, okay? Because the transport capability increases astronomically when compared to the bundle packs and a single cylinder transport, when we're talking about the ability just to fill a cylinder quickly, get it out, get it to the customer and get it there. OK, but when you're talking about massive amounts of, of hydrogen, there is a cryogenic element that has to be applied to that, as well as a cost element that also is applied to that. Things to take into consideration when we're talking about what is the cost of hydrogen and trying to make sense of the numbers that were declared to us. We were able to land on a cost of hydrogen of $17, but that was an aggregate across all three. And, and, and I really say that tongue in cheek to understand that until we get some finalized number on the pie chart of how much single use cylinders, how much bundle pack, how much, if any, bulk transport is going to be engaged in on the onset that it is sheer speculation on our part to understand what they can produce and what they're going to sell the hydrogen for. And, and I think Daniel was alluding to that and trying to be fair to the end viewer because there's a lot of misconception about the price of hydrogen based on internal major use of gray hydrogen, okay? They can get that down to a few dollars of use case, but they're producing it on site using natural gas to power the electrolyzers to use in-house. They're not selling that to the open market. And sometimes people look at that and say, why is green hydrogen so expensive? And that's the reason, okay? That is an in-house 
produced use case for the gray hydrogen. The question I would have is what incentive, if any, can be put forward to the market to incentivize some of those larger institutions to even look at the prospects of taking on and supplementing some of the gray hydrogen for green hydrogen uh, coming from um, a, a, a green source and 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 kind of helping to contribute to those ESG scores that are so important to these large corporations, always looking to reduce that so they can fly the flag of green and, and say, we're doing our part, okay? Number three, how much hydrogen can be produced, okay? In my due diligence of this, this is all over the map. Well, what we know is that there are 16 facilities proposed. What we also know is that we have financing and permitting. Uh, I do emphasize permitting in place for Sorrel Tracy for up to five megawatts uh, facility. Okay. Now, how much need is there? We'll talk about that next. But how much hydrogen can be produced? I thought this was a bullish take away from me when Daniel explained, look, it's somewhat scalable in that if we understand our capital expenditure with regard to the electrolyzers, compressors, construction, uh, at, at warehousing, uh, electrical, all the setup costs, if we understand that, then it is safe to presume that if the permitting cap is is authorized that we can scale up based on the number of stacks is what he called it uh therefore increasing our our production it generates a hundred more questions for me my friends and 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 hopefully you see it the same maybe you watch the interview and you're like i gotta fall all over myself to buy charbon hydrogen i i don't know i'm not here to misconstrue one way or the other what type of conviction you may have on this what I am aiming to do is provide color around what we know and where potentially, based on what we know, where we could go. Okay, that is the key. That is the key. All right. How much hydrogen can be produced? All right. The next question I had is Is there a demand for green hydrogen? I, I don't know. I don't know. I would like to think that there is a demand for green hydrogen. Um, is hydrogen used in it with industrial purposes? Yes. I listened to the interview intently, back and forth, through and through. Mariush asked the question directly, and I don't think that it got uh, answered with the clarity that I would have expected. Now, certainly, this is from my lens. If you review the content and you feel differently than me, so be it. That's great. We're all different, and we're all open to discussion about deliberation around this topic. Why? Because the end question is going to be such that, is there money to be made here? Okay, We can go tit for tat based on whether or not we think there's an opportunity here or not. At the end of the day, we're going to either make money or lose money on this opportunity. Charbonne is going to do, in full capacity, 16 locations at phase five, which I don't think is possible, and I'll discuss that. Okay, Or... In part, they are going to make this business plan a reality, or they're going to fail altogether, fall on their face, and there will cease to exist a charbon hydrogen. That is the end of what we are striving to do by asking these questions. And I don't know if there are facilities out there that have such a need that have been producing cement for many, many years or have been producing fertilizer with the need to use hydrogen in the production of ammonia. I don't know if there is an appetite for green hydrogen, okay? I'm studying myself up on the topic, and this will remain a delta in my due diligence and thesis with regard to whether or not Charbon hydrogen is a good investment or not. I have to understand where the demand is. Now, the silver lining in this is if Sorrel Tracy steps on the line and starts producing green hydrogen, and there's an over-demand, an over-prescription for the hydrogen to where the five megawatt facility at 730 kilograms per day of production of green hydrogen, the demand far surpasses their production capability, then that's going to produce some pressure to approve that phase five application that Daniel spoke about that's looking into the future about six years, okay? however long that's going to take and what infrastructure needs to be built out to actually realize that 25. But maybe we don't need 25. 
Maybe we need phase two. Maybe we need phase three, right? So if those things can kind of finalize, we can kind of understand the appetite for green hydrogen. But it's a delta for me, and I have a question mark in this category with regard to the rhetorical question I had in my due diligence of Charbonne Hydrogen. The next is what makes Charbonne's business model attractive to investors? This is very, very simple. This is not difficult. What makes this the most attractive is the fact that after three hours of transport over the road, hydrogen becomes a negative asset. In other words, the transport costs become greater than the asset itself. Charbonne knows this. This is why they are taking the hydrogen capability to the strategic locations that hopefully through their due diligence, there is that demand that I have a question mark on. Okay, And the cost savings that is going to be realized by drastically reducing the transport costs that the majors are incurring to transport the hydrogen many, many miles over the road with the support of class one tankers. This is the business model that is attractive for Charbonne, and it makes complete sense whether or not they can execute on that plan and start to realize the direct benefit of taking the hydrogen to the customer directly uh, with the shortest dense distance in between point A and point B, then that's the key evaluation uh, step that we will be evaluating going forward. Next, how much will Charbonne pay for the financing of the projects? I thought this was huge. This was also very clear in my mind that Charbonne will be looking to retain 51% ownership at the minimum of each and every of the 16 minimum projects that they have proposed. That's in line with the deal that they have with Superior Propane. That's the deal that they have with um, uh, uh, what they're proposing, right, with the high either finance cost or upfront uh, capital uh, down payment on each of these properties. They think they're probably going to have to take some debt. Um, you know, the, these phase, phase five facilities with 25 megawatts of power, right, are anticipated north of $130 million. That's just on paper. Somebody's going to have to write that bill. Okay. Now, the EBITDA looks attractive on the bottom line, but that's a lot of money for a, a company to have to sell local jurisdictions on to sign off on gain permitting to to just go ahead and execute on these on these projects furthermore how long does it take to bring on a phase five facility right we're not talking about overnight and i don't think we're talking within a year it may surprise me and you may say yeah we can bring a facility on in 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 six months or or, or even less than that show me show me you show me a template where they're able to bring on a phase five facility within 12 months, right on. Now we have a quantifiable template to work off of for future projections. That way it gives merit to future financing deals, to, to, to future uh, understanding of uh, municipal conflicts, uh, uh, whether or not they are even meeting the criteria to come on. Daniel talked about that on the interview. I think all of these are very, very prudent uh, questions. So the next question, how does Charbonne evaluate the criteria in its chosen locations? Daniel shared this. And I think through summary and review of the company, I've been able to discern the same. First of all, interconnectivity and power, very, very important to make sure that the sources of the uh, electricity that are powering uh, the electrolyzers, i.e. the production of green hydrogen, are done from a green source. Therefore, flying the flag of green hydrogen. Second, the cost of electricity of said input. And finally, um, to be near its customers. And I think the latter is really the the the, the backbone of what Charbonne is trying to, to do here. Uh, whether or not they can do it, well, I don't know. Let's kick off the first project. We'll evaluate their successes. We'll, we'll enjoy the learnings and the difficulties that come through, come through that, hell, if any. I look at a phase five proposal and I'm like, yeah, that's without any problem. When was the last time a production facility was brought on the line without problems or without uh, jurisdictional hangups, delays in permitting, right? Okay. Picketing, 
outside your facility because nobody understands green hydrogen and they just don't want it because, well, people are naive and they just think that, I don't know, the world is going to come to an end if we start using green hydrogen, okay? There are difficulties and those difficulties will have to be worked through and I believe that they will once being brought on or we're able to extrapolate that data from, from the primary facility, okay? The final two questions will bring this home for you guys, okay? But before we do that, I want to jump in here and talk about things to consider. Mariush asked Daniel this very pointed question, and I think it's very, very important to highlight this answer. It's a couple of minutes, and I want you to pay particular attention to the permitting process, the time that it takes to do that, and specifically what additional uh, permitting parameters will be uh, involved with some of the larger proposals that Charbon is putting forward. Okay, let's take a listen. Actually, Quebec, if we talk about that Quebec project, we have a permit from the provincial government to go up to five megawatts today in our end. Uh, for the construction permit, uh, the drawings will be are already finalized and are in the process of been approved. And the only thing that I'm missing right now, it's uh, it's a go from from my uh, contractor. The for the twenty for the twenty five megawatt of power, Charbon has a, a request of power uh, at Hydro Quebec right now uh, to be approved, and that will be known within the next I would say couple of months as we need to plan like six years in advance to make, not six years in advance to complete that 25 that five phases we need to apply much in advance because they need to upgrade power lines and substation and it's not only in quebec it will be the same in other jurisdictions so right now as an example i'm in final stage of site selection in detroit so as of today, I sent back an email to uh, the Detroit Regional uh, Economic Development with three sites that have been identified and selected, requesting the local utility to tell me how much megawatts are available at each location to start and what will be the number of months required to increase at each of the phases the capacity of the sites. So each, I would say that each jurisdiction are totally different than any others. Here in Quebec, it took about three months of study and about three months to receive my permits. For the next phases above five megawatt, I will have probably, I will not have other study to apply for but I would like to do what we call a BAPE. And that means that it's kind of an environmental assessment where the public will, will have to come and say, okay, here's the plan that Charbonne is proposing, answering question. When questions are answered, I got my permit. Uh, that is not different than any other jurisdiction. The only thing that could be different, I would say, is if I'm comparing with Texas, where Texas may have a two week uh, green hydrogen project permitted, California, it could be three years. Very good. So we appreciate the color there coming right from Daniel. Um, he's CEO of the company. Um, very important to listen to his insights on um, what he's seeing on the, the 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 bureaucracy, the regulatory side, right? They can't move forward unless permits are in place. So interesting to understand that process, whether or not that process can be expedited, whether or not jurisdictions are going to have um, an appetite for getting these permits in the hands of companies like Charbonne um, so that they can continue on with their plans to build, uh, how expeditiously they can do this. Quite frankly, I could continue on with the thousand questions. And, uh, you know, right now in my evaluation, I only pose those questions to provoke thought. All right. The final two questions. What is Charbonne's current status? Okay. There are schools of thought to understand that in my community on the Independent Investor Channel, to be early 
gives you the greatest chance of return on investment, okay? It is also the scariest time to be investing in a company with the unknowns, okay, that we have addressed that came up during the interview, at least for me, okay? Again, I reserve the right to my opinion, and I also reserve the right for you to make your own decisions with regard to what you heard, how Mariush was probing for information, and a couple of cases I didn't think were sufficiently addressed, okay? But that's on you. The bottom line is Charbon Hydrogen is in the early stages. They are the first mover here. And as admitted on the interview, they've been doing this, the technology with electrolyzers in Europe for the last five years, okay? But here in North America, Charbonne seems to have the first mover advantage strategically earmarking these locations. I agree there's only one Los Angeles. I agree Detroit makes sense. I ag agree that in Quebec, Sorrel Tracy makes sense. I get that. Now, once we start to get some solidification in place, then we will march toward something other than a very, very early stage company. But until then, I will deem it nothing other than that. OK, again, acknowledging that the greatest earning potential probably comes when it makes the least amount of sense to invest in a company. I'll leave you to it. The final question is Charbonne a viable investment? OK, again, back to my point about having a first mover advantage. Some of the bullish points that I talked about in this video are known. They are not my speculation. I tried to keep the speculation down to a minimum. OK, I'm not going to try to go in and make sense of a phase five projection from Charbonne when by admission of Mr. Charette, some of those phase five properties will never come to reality based on a simple lack of ability to earn permit. OK, how much hydrogen is going to be demanded over Charbonne? Look, Sorrel Tracy comes on the line and there's an overprescribed demand over that. No problem. Okay, then we can reevaluate and say, hold on a second, maybe green hydrogen is the wave of the future. Okay, but when people say gray hydrogen or they say dirty hydrogen, the fact of the matter is it's made with natural gas. And there's a lot of schools of thought out there that would suggest that those applications, I don't know, Exxon, BP, Chevron, those majors that are using that in their operation, and it's working just fine. Is there an appetite to upgrade for the reasons that I've suggested in this video? ESG scores, uh, the move, incentives, right, for the use. I know there's a three kilogram credit here in the United States of America, right? So are those incentives enough for companies to transition and do the right thing to maybe partially or uh, in its entirety shift to green hydrogen? And the question is, how much will Charbonne be able to penetrate that market in what I consider to be a blue ocean, which my friends is an absolute bullish sentiment when we're talking about a company that is just on the precipice of providing some quantifiable information that we can take, deduce, extrapolate, and it return back to people in a palatable manner so they can understand why this company is currently trading at $4 million or $5 million, $6 million market cap, it's anemic, right, compared to the opportunity that they are looking to prove out. Guys, I appreciate you tuning into the message. I will leave links to the uh, interview in the description below. Very important for you to watch it. I've watched it three times. I pick up something new every single time. I invite you to that. I also invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell if you enjoy the information. I should have generated some comms on this. Please leave your comments in the section below. I will love to review that after this video. I know it was a little longer, but it was worth hanging with me in this uh, explanation of where Charbonne is because it is in its entirety a pretty complex proposal here with what they're trying to do. And thank you so much and good luck in your investment future.